Hey folks, I'm Dr. Thomas Smithyman. I'm a clinical psychologist. Um, I specialize in treating social anxiety and this is another video on the topic. I'm going to talk today about the most common mistake people make when trying to do social anxiety exposures on their own. So this is going to be part of um, section two of the treatment model, which is to identify and test the beliefs that drive social anxiety. People will often say that they have already tried doing some exposure for social anxiety on their own and that they kind of didn't see the results from it or things got a little bit better but it's still there and that's not unexpected um, because you've got to be pretty precise with exposure for social anxiety you can't just you can't just pick a situation and just hammer at it and just do it again and again and again and again um, I call that blunt force exposure it can sometimes work but oftentimes it won't because you're not actually facing your feared outcome you aren't actually showing the flawed part of yourself the vulnerable part um, and so you're not actually giving your threat system a chance to find out that things are safe. Instead, what people tend to do is to present a protected version of themselves or um, to go into situations uh, kind of acting or presenting differently in some way not showing the part of themselves that they think will be rejected. The underlying belief there is, well, if I show myself, people are going to respond badly and I will get rejected. So therefore they end up going into situations that trigger them, but then they hide and protect. And these are called safety behaviors. Um, Examples of this, so think about this for yourself, but examples might be get shaky hands when you get anxious, well, hide the hands. Underlying that is a belief, well, if they saw my hands, that they would reject me. Maybe it's um, like uh, if I show who I truly am, my true opinions, my true thoughts, people will have a bad reaction to that, so you end up agreeing with other people or not stating like your true opinions. Um, maybe there's physical features that you think people will reject. So maybe you, you know, hide your teeth or like dress in a certain way. Um, a lot of times it's sort of trying to adopt a, like a persona that's like cooler or wittier or something, or it's um, like kind of cut it off parts of yourself that are not good enough or not cool enough, like you end up saying very little or you don't, you know, you keep yourself very still and tight. These are all ways of trying to hide the vulnerable part of you, the part that you think is flawed. And what happens with this, right, is because you're in social situations, but you're not actually revealing who you, you are, so people don't get a chance to be accepting of that or neutral to that. So you never get to teach your threat system who I am is safe in this situation. Instead, what you're learning is if I use my protections, I'll be okay in this situation. So because of this, you can end up with people who are very socially skilled, um, very good actors, social performers, but they remain socially anxious um, because they haven't actually done that, those deeper types of exposures. As a side note too, um, people come in complaining a lot of times about the safety behaviors. They've been protected for so long that they start to realize that people oftentimes have a bad reaction to the protection and the research backs this up. So the answer to drop the protections 
And when you're doing exposure, start to show the, the real you, show the flaws in little ways, allow the real self to be seen. And then if things go okay, it's a true exposure. The threat system is really learning, oh, this situation's safe, I'm actually okay here. This situation, these peoples, the, the, these people, this part of me, um, these are acceptable. And when that happens, the, the threat system will come down. It goes, oh, okay, that's a little bit safer. Whereas if you keep putting yourself in situations in a really protected way, then it believes, yeah, okay, I did, a, I survived, but if they saw the real me, then they'd reject me. That's what we're trying to really get at. All of this is going after the central social anxiety equation. It's a series of beliefs that are knocked over like dominoes to lead to the triggering of the social anxiety threat system. Um, and really briefly, you enter a situation and the first belief is, I am flawed. There's something wrong with me. Two is, if I'm in this situation, my flaws will be obvious to people. They'll see it. The next one is, they will believe that these are flaws. You know, versus like, oh, whatever, it's fine. They will be judgmental of these flaws. They'll be attacking, harsh, critical. The next belief is that that will lead them to be rejecting. And the final belief is rejecting, rejection is intolerable for me. So these get knocked over like dominoes. Um, if we can stop one of those dominoes from being knocked over, so if we can dispute that belief, then the odds of the social anxiety experience getting triggered much lower. So if we can show that you think you've got flaws, but belief here, you reveal the flaw and people don't seem to notice, well then you're pretty safe. Or if you reveal the flaw and people notice it, but they don't think it's a problem, like maybe you think it's a flaw, like you think, oh, I have, what if my ears are too square? But other people are like, no, your ears are fine. Then yeah, th there's no issue there. Or they see it's a flaw, they don't think it's a big deal. Maybe they have the same flaw, they reveal that later. Or they see the flaw in the context of the whole person so I think it's not a big deal. If we can change any of these, we can stop that system from being triggered. So that's really, really hard to work on this equation if you protect and, know, and you never present that flawed part of you to begin with. And so that's why this is such a big problem for exposure. So research shows that if we work on dropping those, those protections and actually risking that exposure gets a lot more effective. Um, it's also, you can make it more effective by externalizing your attention to really look at what the reactions are. We have a tendency to self-focus, so when you do reveal something, look and see what are people's real reactions like. That makes it more effective. And also, it's really important, if you do this and you start to reveal more of these kind of vulnerable parts of yourself, the things you think are wrong with you, if you do that and people are accepting, it goes a long way to reducing shame and self-criticism, which is such a painful component of social anxiety. Okay, I really hope that was helpful. Um, please, I guess, like this, like write me comments. I, I like making videos in response to those. Um, please subscribe, that'd be nice. Um, and I also have a functioning website now, so go check out my website thomasmithyman.com and uh, I'm now available too for doing online treatment. Okay, thanks.